In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to Pythagoras. So to begin with here, let's just state the result of Pythagoras. We say that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So what I've got here is a right angle triangle. It's important to state here that Pythagoras can only work on a right angle triangle. If you don't have a right angle triangle, then we can't use Pythagoras. So what I've got here is this side which has a length of a, this side here which has a length of b, and then this side here which has a length of c. Now if we just think about drawing a square here from each side, we've got this side here at the bottom. My diagram won't be perfect, but if I draw my square here, it'll look something like this. Okay, so this length here would also be b, this length here would also be b, because it's a square, right? So if we think about the area here, if that's b as well, then the area here would be b times b, so the area here would be b squared. Let's do the same now for this side here. So we're going to draw another square. Won't be perfect, but it might look, say, like this. Okay, like so. Again, this side here would be A. This side here would be A. And again, this side here would also be A. So again, if I want the area here, this would be A times A, giving me A squared. Now, what Pythagoras states here, that if we take the square here, so the area of this square here would be B squared. The area of this square here would be A squared. So Pythagoras states that if we take these two areas here and add them together, that would be equal to the area of this square here. So if I draw my final square here, it would look, say, something like this. Again, this isn't perfect. To illustrate this idea here. So this length here would be C. This length here would be C. And again, this length here would be C. My final area here would be C squared. Okay. Like we said, Pythagoras states that we take this square here, so A squared, or the area of this square, get the area of this square here, add those together, and that is equal to the area of this square. Okay. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay. So like we said, this only works on a right angle triangle. That's really important. If you don't have a right angle triangle, then you can't use Pythagoras. Okay, and in terms of the proof here of this theorem, you don't need to be able to prove it, but there is plenty of proofs out there. So if you do want to kind of see how that works, go check out a proof of it. Um, I won't show, show the proof here in this video. Um, like I said, it's a bit past what you need to understand. But if you are um, curious about how that proof works, like I said, just go check that out. So that's our introduction there to Pythagoras. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at two quick practice questions here for Pythagoras. So we just start off here with question one, we're asked to calculate the length of BC. So the length of BC here, that would be from B to C. So that would be this length here, okay? Now, we didn't mention it in the introduction, but the length that's opposite the right angle here, so I've got my right angle here, the length that's opposite my right angle, this length here has a special name, and it's what we call the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here, and what's special about the hypotenuse is this will always be the longest side in a right angle triangle. Okay, so for the purpose here of Pythagoras, the hypotenuse would always be labeled as C. Okay, if we just recall Pythagoras here, we have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so we now need to decide whether this 3 centimeters here and this 4 centimeters here. Which one will be A and which one will be B? And the answer to this is it doesn't actually matter. Okay, as long as we label the hypotenuse here as C, it doesn't matter which we call here A, on, a and B. If I call this 3 centimeters here A, and my 4 centimeters here B, in that case then, A squared, that would be 3 squared, plus B squared, that would be plus 4 squared, that would be equal to C squared, okay? So 3 squared here, so 3 times 3, that would give me 9. 4 squared here, that's 4 times 4, that would give us 16. So 9 plus 16 is equal to C squared. So in that case then, if we simplify here the left hand side, 9 plus 16 is 25. What we've got here then is C squared equals 25. What I need to do here now is just find C. 
Okay, we're finding C here. That's the length of BC. If I've got C squared equals 25, I just want C here. What I need to do now is square root both sides. Okay. If we take the square root of the left hand side here, we'll just get C. If you take the square root of C squared, that will give you C. And then we take the square root here of the right hand side, we get the square root of 25, which is equal to 5 there. Okay. So this length here, BC, in that case then, BC is equal to 5 centimeters. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution there to question one. So if we just take a look here at question two, what we've got here again is a right angle triangle, which we can see here. We're asked to find the length of AB. So AB here, so from A to B, that would be this length here. So to begin with here, remember we always label the hypotenuse as C. So that's the side opposite the right angle. That would be that side here, this 20 centimeters, which we're gonna label as C. So from here, it doesn't matter which of these other two sides now are A and B. I'll just call this one here that's missing A. This one here that we have as B. So let's just recall Pythagoras here. So we say that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, we don't know A. That's what we're looking to find here, the length of AB. We'll leave that as it is. B squared, well, we know that's 12 here. So 12 squared. I've got A squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared, which is 20 here. So 20 squared. Now if we think about this for a moment here. This isn't quite as straightforward because we already know the length of the hypotenuse here. Okay, so what we're working on now is one of the lengths here of the shorter sides. So we're almost working backwards now. Okay, so in other words, what I need to do now is actually use rearranging. If I just want a squared here, I now need to go to this 12 squared here on the left hand side. What I'm going to technically do here is just subtract 12 squared off both sides. Okay, you can either do that from the very first line here. So if we want a squared here, that would be c squared minus b squared. You can do it from this line here to get that a squared is equal to 20 squared minus 12 squared. Okay, basically the clue here or the key here is to notice that the hypotenuse will always be squared first. And then we subtract the smaller side squared. Okay, if you get this the wrong way around, what you'll end up here with is a negative value here on the right hand side. And obviously, when you come to take the square root here, you're going to get an error in a moment. Okay, but like I said, just remember the hypotenuse squared minus the smaller side squared. Okay, so in this case, then we evaluate this here a squared is equal to 20 squared, which is 400, minus 12 squared, which is 144. So what I've got here is 400 minus 144. In that case, then we get a squared is equal to 400 minus 144. So that would give me 256. We get that a squared is equal to 256. And then what I'm going to do here is hit the square root of both sides. So in that case, then a is equal to the square root of 256. So off the top of my head, I think this is 16, but let me just double check this on my calculator. So square root of 256, yeah, perfect, we get 16 there. Okay, so A is equal to 16. We're working in centimeters here. We're going to get 16 centimeters, or in other words, the length of AB here would be equal to 16 centimeters there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that's brings the end of this video on an introduction to Pythagoras. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for Pythagoras.